On today's episode of Draw Every Day with JJK, we are going to learn how to color our comics digitally. We're going to visit with graphic novelist Katie of the Babysitter's Little Sister graphic novels, and we're going to introduce the idea jars. Let's get to it. It is Draw Every Day with JJK. <laughs> Every day with JJK. So welcome back to Draw Every Day with JJK. In the last episode, we drew this. Well, I drew this. I hopefully you drew at home as well. And I talked about how I used non-photo blue pencil, brushes, and ink to create the original art from my comics. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this art, I'm going to scan it into my computer here, and I'm going to talk to you about how I color my art digitally once it's scanned in. So I'm going to place my art on the scanning bed and then my scanner will automatically create an overview of the image. First, it'll detect all of these little pieces. I'm going to get rid of that. Now you can see here, this is DPI. That stands for dots per inch. Since we're going to want to print this, we're going to want to bump it up to 300. The higher the DPI, the better and crisper the image will look. Now, I want to get that not on color, not on black and white, but on text, because I don't want to see that non-photo blue. I will select the area in which I want my scanner to scan, and I'm going to save it to my pictures folder. I'm going to come over here to the name and just name it so I could find it easily later, and hit scan. And it's going to save as a TIFF, which is just a high resolution uh, image. Once I have that all scanned in, now I'm going to open up Photoshop. And here are the tools that I use. Sometimes I might uh, color everything in on an iPad with an Apple Pencil here. Other times I will use this. This is called uh, Wacom Tablet. It's a stylus. And so this kind of acts like a mouse. I'm going to plug this right into my laptop here and I have uh, this little stylus and wherever I touch here on my Wacom tablet, there's a point on the laptop that meets that. So uh, this is something if you're using a laptop, but also just an iPad uh, with some sort of stylus also works just, just as well. However, to get everything scanned in, odds are you need a laptop. I don't know of any tablets that can directly connect to a scanner. So now that I have my drawing here in Photoshop, I'm gonna organize my workspace. And Photoshop is all about layers. Imagine layering a piece of paper on top of another piece of paper on top of another piece of paper. What I want to do for starters, this scanned as a, I wanna to go to mode and change from bitmap to grayscale. And then I wanna to go to mode and go from grayscale to either RGB or CMYK. CMYK is for when you're in doing working in print. RGB is when your ultimate goal is just for on a screen. And that's a difference. You have to know the difference on where that is. So I cut and paste my image onto a new layer. And then I go to that layer and you'll see this little bar here towards the bottom. I slide that part there down into the middle. And the reason why I do this is now that has erased all of the white space on my drawing. So now I can see through onto another layer here. I'll just put a little yellow there on that middle layer that I just created. See, now I can see right through it. Otherwise, that layer would contain the white of, of that paper. So I'm going to get rid of the pencil sketches I made. If you recall, I wasn't happy with the way I drew Dee's eyes. So I'm going to get rid of the drawings there. I'm going to select the other eyes that I made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the magic wand tool and I'm going to bring it over there. I'm going to tilt it and let's see how that looks. Okay, now layer two is underneath that black line work. And so what's going to happen is anything I add to this layer, since it's underneath that black ink, is going to appear behind it on the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color in Lunch Lady and Betty with their signature colors. Now sometimes what I do when I'm working on the actual books, uh, I will take uh, uh, an image of them that I've created from previous books 
and I'll take the little eyedropper and put that in in order to make sure I'm getting just the exact color. For the sake of this little workshop, I'm just going to eyeball it. And I also, as a, as a graphic novelist, I work with a colorist, and the colorist's job is to help me get all of the coloring done. And I've been working with an artist named Joey Weiser. He's a very talented colorist, and he's helped me out on Jedi Academy, most of the Lunch Lady books, and he's helping me out with some other projects I'm working on now. And he has his own graphic novels as well. He has a graphic novel series called Merman, which is really good. We'll get to talking about that in a, a future episode. So I'm just kind of coloring things in right now. No, so let me get let me get lunch lady skin tone in there. And just eyeballing it, that's not uh, the exact uh, skin tone that she typically has. I'm just gonna uh, get the fill tool and fill it in to make it a little bit lighter. All right, that looks good to me. Let me get slightly darker skin tone for Betty. Color in her her face, her arms, and then I'll move up to her hair. She has a gray hair, so I'm going to go to blue and over to the, the black area to create that gray. Now, since the kids are in front of Lunch Lady and Betty, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and create another layer. Add layer. Oh, also, always remember to... Um, to, to properly label your layers because it gets confusing. So that layer is called Lunch Lady and Betty. This layer will be called Kids. It's above the LL and Betty layer. So whatever I draw here will be on top of that uh, Lunch Lady and Betty, any colors I have there. So let me start with uh, Terrence's skin tone. And then I'll move on to uh, Terrence's shirt and sleeves and pants and you might eventually as you're getting more comfortable with Photoshop all of the tools have a, a key on the keyboard that corresponds for a quick shortcut so if you were to press control B you get the brush control G you get the fill, fill tool and it eventually becomes second nature To create a layer that's on top of all of them and I'm going to use a special effects brush and the brush that I'm going to use is made up of a bunch of dots so it gives that feeling and that vibe of an old comic book which are, they're called Bende dots and watch what happens when I go over certain areas on their cheeks you see those dots and that's going to appear on top of them now let me add some other dots on the character's clothing to give it a little bit more depth. So a slightly darker purple for Dee's hair. And I'll use then I'll use the dropper to pick up. I'll use the dropper to pick up the color of Lunch Lady's hair, get a darker version of that. Now, if I want to add something in the background, I'm going to create a layer underneath all of the characters, and I'm going to use the lasso brush, and I'm going to create a shape with the lasso brush. And I'm choosing the lasso brush that will create straight edges. And what that's going to do is that's going to just select all of the, that space. It's going to activate the space within this shape. So whatever I draw or fill will only go in this space. Okay, I'm now going to use the fill tool to put in like a yellowish, let me find a yellowish orange color. Uh, now it's a little too brown. I want it to look like a big lunch lady comic book spark. Fill that color, there we go, okay. Now I'm going to go back and get that specialty brush that has the dots. I'm going to select a yellow color and that brush now I'm going to make it really big 
and I'm going to fill in that space. It's only going to color in the space that's activated inside uh, that lasso brush. Now you can see this is behind everything, but we're seeing it appear through Lunch Lady's and Betty's shirt and everyone's eyeballs because there is no white there. I didn't actually apply white. So after I fill this all in, I'm going to take my eraser tool and I'm going to erase all of those little areas. And again, this is on the background layer. And we're almost done. save my file now I could what I would do is I would then send that file over to uh, my publisher uh, but what you could also do is you could print it out and share it with your friends or you know you could you could uh, give it to one of the digital file to one of your grown-ups to share it but when we print something out we then have something to put on our refrigerator and our refrigerators really are our first art galleries all right let's take a moment uh, we've been on the screen quite a bit today. Let's check in with the pugs. It is time for Pug Camp. All right, well, thank you, Pugs. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna check in with another one of my graphic novelist friends. And today we're talking to Katie Farina. She adapted Anne Martin's The Babysitter's Little Sister books to be graphic novels. The first one, Karen's Witch, was published last year. This book, Karen's Roller Skates, was just recently published. Now, my middle kid uh, isn't a voracious reader, uh, enjoys books, but doesn't get very excited. And what Lucky said, this is the very first book that they ever got super excited about. We went to the bookstore right when this was published. And man, I'll tell you, that kid ripped through this book in a way that I have never seen them rip through books before. So Katie, thank you so much for lighting that fire in my middle kid and getting them excited to read. So let's all hop on the old rotary phone and give Katie a call. <laughs> Hey, Katie. Hi, Jarrett. Hi, everyone. My name's Katie, and this is my cat, Guinness. And today, I'm really excited to show you how to draw Karen and Boo Boo from Babysitter's Little Sister. Now, the great thing about Karen and all of her friends is that they're made up of all curvy shapes. So you can draw a lot of C's and a lot of U's and get pretty much any character in the Little Sister series. So for Karen's nose and eyes, we're just going to draw some little curvy shapes here. Her eyes kind of look like upside down U's, and that's kind of how I think about them, or sometimes like C shapes. And for her hair, we're just gonna draw lots of curvy V's. Now we're gonna draw some little strands of hair in here, and then a backwards C for her ear, and then let's draw a big bean shape for her mouth. really excited. We're going to draw Karen playing with her cat Boo Boo today because that's something I love to do with my kitty cats. So you can see it's all nice curvy shapes. Now we're going to draw Karen sitting on the ground here and holding up a little string toy for Boo Boo. Draw her other shoulder. It's all nice curvy lines. There we go. And now let's draw a big, long C for her leg. And a triangle for her shoe. Very easy, you could totally do this at home. Now for her hand, it's gonna be resting on her knee here. It's gonna look a little silly. But now we're gonna draw her other knee, which is more C shapes, just like that. And now we're gonna draw Boo Boo. His head is an big upside down U or kind of a C on its side. And Boo Boo is a chubby kitty cat, so we gotta make sure we draw lots of little fat folds in there for him. 
so that he looks really big and soft. And draw his paws just like this. Give him a nice big tummy. And then for his expression, he kind of has a grumpy looking face, even though I think he's probably a nice cat. Does not like to play though. So even though we're gonna draw Karen playing with him, now we're gonna draw her holding a little stick. And we're gonna draw a little mousy. And now we're gonna draw a little teaser toy. And there you have it, it's Karen and her kitty cat. Bye Jarrett, thanks for having me. Keep drawing friends. Oh, well Katie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I appreciate your books. I appreciate you taking the time to draw for us. Congratulations on becoming a New York Times bestseller too with these books. That is a huge accomplishment. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Something we're going to do now on the new Draw Every Day with JJK is we enter this new fall season. We are going to have drawing challenges. And so I have these idea jars. I have four idea jars. There's a jar that's filled with ideas of superpowers. There's one that's filled with animals, not literally filled with animals, I ideas of animals, like, like examples of animals, and human jobs, and inanimate objects. I'm just realizing this seems like a really, really weird episode of Jeopardy. And you might be asking yourself, why googly eyes, Jarrett? To which I respond with, why not? This is how it's going to go. Every other episode is going to be a brainstorming episode. And the one in between that is going to be an episode in which I give instructions. So today was an instruction episode. Now, the next time you see me, I will, because I have to get into this rhythm here. The next time you see me, the next episode will be another instruction episode. But the one after that, so the second for the week, will be the brainstorming idea jar episode in which I will then show you how I drew the prompts and then share with you all of the drawings that came in and we'll pull two more ideas for the next week's drawing challenge. I think I'm confusing myself a little bit here, but once we get going, it's going to all make sense. So I'm going to choose, let's see, uh, I'm going to choose two, I am going to choose something from the animals jar. Giraffe. The animal is a giraffe. And now, human jobs. What human job is our giraffe going to have? Dentist. Giraffe dentist. So this is the prompt for the drawing challenge. A giraffe dentist. Draw your giraffe dentist. Ask your grown-ups to submit it to Draw Every Day with JJK. And the next time we have, the next time we meet, remember, I'm going to be giving you another lesson. The one after that, I'm going to be drawing the giraffe dentist. I'm going to be showing your giraffe dentist. I'll pull two more ideas. Give you time to make your whatever things. Instruction class. Idea jar brainstorming weirdo drawing thing. Okay. I will see you soon. In the meantime, Check out this awesome work that was sent in that you made. Continue to send in your awesome artwork via your grown-ups because at the end of every instruction class, I'm going to share you share all of that artwork with all of you. Uh, I'm so excited to be getting back into the rhythm of Draw Every Day with JJK. I'm Jared, JJK, and I will see you soon. Please click like and subscribe and keep drawing. See you soon.